What is up, you guys? Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Nikki here. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about this book, The Power of Habits. And you already know the drill. Let's get it. Ooh, big bad. You're not talking money. You can miss me with the chit chat. I'm not with the rah rah. All right, you guys, so this is the second book, the second month of my little book club millionaire mindset kind of idea where I think it'd be cool at the first month on the community tab of my page to write down the book that I will be reading for the month, give you guys an affiliate link to Amazon. So yes, if you buy the book, you will be helping me out, I think a couple pennies. <laughs> but that way at the end of the month, when we talk about it, we can kind of have a discussion down in the comments about what you took from the reading that month. Because here's the thing, if you're not evolving, I feel like you're dying and books are a great place to learn things, whether it's, you know, spirituality or money or relationships or whatever it is. I mean, obviously these are probably going to be more like self-growth, investing, <laughs> business related books, but the whole concept in general is to read a damn book. So this month was the power of habits. Next month I'm super excited too, but we're not there yet. Okay. We got to talk about this one first because this had a lot of good information. I will say though, this book was extremely repetitive. I got like halfway through and I was like, they're just saying the same thing and giving a lot of case studies and a lot of like scientific lab work about the concept of this. But what I did was I wrote wrote down kind of what I took out on the back here. And this is kind of what I'm gonna go over with you to keep it real simple, sweet to the point because I'm not trying to talk about a book for like half an hour. So let's let's dive right into this and get into the first thing that this book is all about. And I hope you guys do not mind that I'm literally gonna read out of my notes because quite frankly, I'm not very good at remembering things. I have to take a lot of notes all the time and that's just who I am. So it is what it is. But here is what a habit is. You have a cue, a routine and a reward and it happens on this loop. And after a certain amount of time, Time. This is so wired into our brain that we don't even have to think about it. We have a certain cue, we do a certain thing and get a specific reward. So in order to change that, we have to consciously, that's a hard word to say, <laughs> recognize the cue and the reward we are trying to get and change the routine or the action in between. So for example, like a good habit, you would have the cue of possibly, let's say you're trying to run or you've created this habit of running, which God bless you. You lay your clothes and your running shoes out the night before. So when you wake up, you see that it's your cue you put it on you do the action or routine which is going on the run and then you have the reward of feeling really good about yourself getting hot getting sexy getting a six pack whatever it is that you are rewarding yourself with and that's how the habit is that's how it's formed when you do it long enough you don't really have to think about it anymore you just know that's what you have to do so for my little honestly kind of horrible example so say i had a headache and the way i took care of my headache was i drank a coke and then i felt better and my head didn't hurt anymore well drinking soda all the time is not a really good habit to be into right so we need to change the routine of having the coke so if you have a headache and then you do a 15 minute meditation or like a 15 minute nap, something that kind of relaxes your whole body, then your headache goes away. I'm not a doctor. Okay. This is just an example, but you're changing out that routine for something more beneficial for you. And you're getting the same reward. Does that make sense? I hope so. Then another thing that is super, super important to this habit loop is the craving. And normally you crave the reward. So you're craving what is at the end of the habit. Because if you start thinking about, you know, going on this run or how you feel after the run and feeling really good about yourself, getting good sweat on, feeling healthy. You start to crave that feeling before you even do the routine, before you even set out your clothes. When you think about it, you know what that feels like. And that feeling and emotion really drive in those kind of processes in your brain. And craving is a huge part of that because the craving will push you through the routine. So like if you like that feeling after you run, you got to push yourself and really run your ass off to get to that point. So the craving gets you through that kind of just like in investing, like we really want to be financially free. We want to build wealth for our family, but we might have to grind in the meantime and have five different jobs and we work overnight or whatever it is for you. And that's not very fun, but you crave the reward of living your life on your own terms. That's why you do it. Does that make sense? Then to piggyback off of that is willpower. And obviously that's self-explanatory. It kind of fits into the craving. You have to have the will, the power to go through this and make conscious decisions to recognize those habits and change the routines because otherwise you're just going to keep doing the same damn thing. And the last thing I want to mention is just having a plan. So it gave you in the book, it gave you kind of ideas of how to do that. So all the cues, like every cue that we have usually follows under one of these things, location, time, emotional state, or immediately after an action or other say, you know, you're trading in the stock market. You take a big loss. Your initial reaction is you are sad and pissed and angry. So you're filled with this emotion of anger, which is kind of a cue that you're upset. So then you're going to do something that is maybe harmful, like drink a six pack by yourself or a whole bottle of wine or whatever. And then you feel better about yourself, but your habits and the cue of that emotional state is not good. And you have to recognize that so you can break it. So the biggest takeaway
takeaway here, y'all, is to recognize your cues, recognize your reward that you get after you do a specific routine. And if you want to change the habit, change that routine, that process in the middle. That can go for anything in your life, literally anything that you're trying to change. And remember, it is possible. It's very possible to do these things. Not easy, but definitely possible. If you guys are interested in getting this book, I will go ahead and leave down in the first pinned comment below the link that you can pick it up. Like I said, super good book, super like scientifically laboratory <laughs> what like labs and stuff testing science but it has helped me kind of begin to be more conscious about my habits and what i'm doing so i can figure out how i can change those if you guys could if you would smash the thumbs up for your girl the channel is something else let me tell you let me know down below if you read the book what your takeaways were if you haven't read the book maybe there's another book that you kind of can relate to that let me know i like this to be an open discussion and if you are not a member of the crew and you want to be you should consider subscribing by hitting the nb in the bottom corner or that red subscribe button down underneath the video below if you like to make money and have a good ass time you should consider it and if you're interested in the book i read last month or that playlist i will go ahead and link it right here for you check it out and you guys you already know if you made it this far i absolutely love you and i will see you in the next one bye guys